So I'm here at Belfast Mini Mills with Lyndon Dub Nobles in downtown Belfast. And so they're the owners, operators, sort of creative spirits behind what is quite an enterprise of uh, manufacturing and uh, creating a lot of projects. I'll, if we can talk about that. So tell me, maybe start then, to, when, how long does this go back when you kind of get into the milling business? Well, it started in BC about 25 years ago. We had our own animals. Uh, we sent it away, the fiber away to a big mill to get processed, and we didn't get our own fiber back. So we thought, we've got to change that. So we did some research, and over the next two years, started to uh, manufacture our own equipment. And it, was there an element of innovating or designing that through yes, trial and error? Yes, every piece of equipment, um, some of the mechanisms, we could not use what they use in the industry because the fiber industry especially, it ran on the shirt tails, the coattails, of uh, the cotton industry and the, and the whole industrial revolution. So when the, the, the fiber industry took off, the natural fiber industry took off of animal fibers, they just started out with huge equipment and it's always been massive equipment. Some of the spinning mills you walk into, they're so big you cannot see. If you stand in the middle of it, you cannot see the people in either directions. They're so big. And we scaled it right down to service the exotics. And so people can have their own home-based mill to process the exotic fibers. And, uh, and well, then and also the trick was to make it user-friendly because in a big mill you have one job. In a mini mill you have to know every aspect of it. So that was... Our fiber separating machine, our de-hair, it takes hair out of hair, separates the coarse hair from the fine hair. So that allowed us to do um, all the cashmere type animals. We work with the muskox, we work with the Inuit, we buy their hides, we bring them down, we comb out the underdown, then we ship the hides back and they get tanned and made into products. So everything gets used. So that's why they're thrilled to work with us because it all gets used. So you're really the classic entrepreneurs, you wanted to do it on your own terms right. and your scale right. and your specific circumstances and you've found people all over the world who have, you know, have, the, have the same desire. Uh, so how, ma how many countries would, would your mills or your sort of, oh, we uh, argue about customers it. be in now? Yeah. Um, 39, 40? 40. <laughs> 40 countries. Great. We're just shipping to Italy right now. That, that's the first machines to go to Italy. And, that's, and, and that includes service, training, right. uh, it's quite an elaborate uh, relationship, is it? It is, it goes on and on and on. Um, the, the wear parts and when they expand their mills, most of them expand their mills, which is great for us. There's no training involved, you just ship equipment. And so that works fantastic. But the challenges of dealing globally, our guys have had to uh, put up with volcanoes erupting, rebel uprisings, poisonous spiders, snakes. Well, twice we had to pull our people out of Libya before Qaddafi's untimely passing, um, we had to bring people out because of those, uh, that person that was released from the Air Lockerbie thing. Our guy was there working and it wasn't safe, so we had to get him out right away. And the next time we had a guy actually flying there and they rerouted the, everything because the war started. So, so beyond the number and the scale geographically, um, yeah, maybe we can get an idea of how much this has grown, the mills and the, the projects, I'll call it. Well, we thought we were going to build three or four big machines, and that was it. And then it just, the need for de-herring, the need for spinning, uh, the need for felting, everything. So we just started making all machines suited for scaled down uh, cottage size equipment. And then we, uh, we're still adding machines. There's still machines on the list that we have to invent pretty well. The dehairing machine, it took two years of development to get it till it worked. And uh, this year um, at your operation, it's in Murray River, is it, where you're making the manufacturing? That's where all the machines, everything we make, we make from scratch. So the steel comes in and it's all, all the drums are made, uh, all the frames are made, everything is made and we put it all together. And, and what would, if, how would, depending on how you count, how many mills or how many machines would you say you'd be manufacturing this year, Doug? All told, we're going to be, just number of machines, it's going to be roughly 100 machines this year. And that's up 
from the last two years, about 75%. Isn't that fantastic? We're yeah. setting up another mill at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Harmony Meadows is buying the mill. And, the, and the, then with your own working off your mills, uh, you've got quite a scale of an operation in, you know, I'm going to call it making materials and projects. That's probably not even the right language. What, 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 how have you describe what goes on here in terms of well, that? Fiber processing. Mm -hmm. So we do custom work. We do pre-training, but just keeping the shelves and the store filled. I mean, we're getting over eight thousand people a year coming through the store. And they blend all, all over the world. Everybody's blending all different types of fibers, mm -hmm. and other people cannot do that. They don't have the access to the fibers and they don't have the ability or the knowledge how to do it. Our machines can blend anything. We well, and that's why we give a free tour, because people haven't even thought about the process. And when they come through and they, they see all the steps and then they go into the store and they buy something, they're taking home a memory. And I think that is a huge part of the tourism these days, is, is uh, experiences that people have. And in terms of the number of employees involved, how many would you have? We have 22 year-round employees. That's a great thing. And, uh, and so in the winter, on the, the uh, processing fiber, uh, you're, you're making product for the, for the, for the next... Uh, yeah, we might take a couple of weeks off just to get our creative juices flowing again. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much a full bore right through the... the there, there's two ways people run the mill. They buy it for custom processing. That means they bring in customers' fibers and they process it for that customer and they send it back to that customer and there's a fee to it. And then there's the other one is much more value added. That is having the store like we do. So when we have this whole situation here and then the store, you don't have to do custom work. Everything you make, you can sell in your own store and that's three times more money for your time that you're putting in. So it's much more value added having a store. And you keep it in circulation right here in, uh, in Greater Belfast? Uh, pretty much, yes. Yeah. And the initial, uh, you said you had 8,000 visitors this year, yeah. some of whom will come for training that would involve them staying for a period of time. Yeah, so it, it, it's a ripple effect through the, the community for people that are, you know, are staying in B&Bs. Um, well, the people that come for training would probably be between 50 and 100 people any given year. And all the other, you know, 7,900 or more are, are people that come to the island uh, just for holidays and they find us. But there, there are so many mills around now that people, when they plan their holidays, coming even from Europe, we just had a couple from Belgium. They told their friends they're going to Prince Edward Island for a holiday. And they said, oh, you have to go to um, yeah. Belfast Mini Mills. Yeah. <laughs> so they came and visited us and told us the story. And, and that's free advertising for us. Uh, like Linda was saying, we've had people coming, uh, tourists, come in and stop and see us, and a couple of years later they come back and buy a mill. Well, it says a lot about how you're putting Belfast and PEI on the map, that your main way of uh, promoting what you do or having your work promoted is word of mouth yeah. all over the world. Yes, we do very little advertising anymore. Uh, years ago, you, we used to spend fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year worth of advertising. Now it's like five thousand, six thousand dollars all total, mm -hmm. and most of that's with uh, the island magazines. So this is something that has kind of grown truly organically from where you started. So yes. Do you um, do, do you do you see the point where uh, it it sort of gets out of whack, or how do you manage in terms of the balance? Well, yeah, it's balance we're, I think we're sort of getting to that point because <laughs> the world's a big place, and, and we're, we're a tiny little. Bit tiny little family business, so it's interesting. <laughs> well, it's not a bad problem to have. No, uh, no, and, that's not. And it's, been, it's all grown authentically from how you got into it to uh, how you're serving your customers today and, and, and continuing to employ people and create uh, a, a good prosperity and economy right here. Well, and you've got to keep, especially for the store, keep coming up with wonderful things every year to wow people on their next trip, so yeah, that's a challenge. Well, I certainly appreciate what you're doing and uh, we congratulate you and wish you well on uh, all the next phases. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>